Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain. Hi, my friends. Welcome back to Faith and Family. Happy Friday. We made it to the weekend. Thanks for joining us today as we wrap up our first week of talking about the saints, the different saints. So far, we've talked about St. Joseph the Worker, St. Gregory the Great, St. Augustine, St. Benedict, St. Cecilia. And then today we are going to talk about St. Didicus. And a lot of people don't even realize St. Didicus is one of the saints our parish hall is named after because it's the door all the way in the back, kind of by the kitchen. So next time you're able to go to the parish hall, um, I want you to see if you can find the door that says St. Didicus on it. All right. So St. Didicus um, is also known as St. Diego or San Diego, which is the same name as the city we live in and the same name that our um of the county we live in and the same name as the diocese that we belong to, San Diego. So um, that's pretty interesting, but that's um, in Spanish, the name Didicus translates to Diego. So when we talk about St. Didicus, we're talking about San Diego or San Diego as it's um, translated in Spanish. Now, San Diego or St. Didicus, he was born in Spain a very long time ago. And unlike the other saints we've talked about this week, he his family was not wealthy. They did not have a lot of money. They were very poor, but they were very holy people that loved God a lot. And they taught Diego to also love God. So even though he wasn't able to go to school, he saw that there were um, friars in his town, monks, uh, Franciscan monks, friars, that's what they're called. And he asked them and he begged and he begged if, they, if he could... Um, spend time with them and, and pray with them and learn with them. Um, and they agreed, even though he was young, he was just a teenager. Um, and even though he had never gone to school and he didn't have any sort of formal training or um, any, any long studying or anything like that, he was still just incredibly holy. And a lot of the friars and, and just the elders in the community were so amazed at the things he would say and and just how um, how much he knew about God and how much he loved God. And they were so amazed with his knowledge and his faith um, that they eventually accepted him as one of their own and he became um, a lay friar. So he was consecrated as a Franciscan, but he was not a priest. Um, and then he was actually sent to a place called the Canary Islands um, because there was a lot of people there who didn't know about God, didn't know about Jesus. And so he was sent there as a missionary to go and teach them. And so he went there very happy to do so. And he did such a good job, such a tremendous job. While others had gone there and not done such a good job, St. San Diego, St. Didicus did a great job and they actually put him in charge, even though he was so young and so new and hadn't gone to school, they put him in charge. And so he remained there for a few years and then he was brought back to Spain. And then um, while he, after he was in Spain for a little bit, the head of the monastery wanted to send him to Rome because there was a great big jubilee celebration happening in Rome. And there was also going to be the celebration of the canonization of St. Bernadine of Siena. So St. Bernadine was being named a saint. Her canon, the canonization was happening. And um, so they sent St. Diego, St. Didicus to go to Rome. And so he went to Rome. And while he was there, there was... Um, an outbreak of a really contagious illness. And so he had to stay there. And a lot of the other friars um, who had gone became ill. And so they in San Diego stayed there in Rome for three months and took care of all of the sick friars. And he actually had some, he, he wasn't a doctor. He didn't have any training. He didn't have any medicine, um, but he just took care of them as best as he could. And there was some miraculous healings even. Um, it said that there was some times where people would be, some of the friars would be very sick and St. Diego would just make the sign of the cross on them and they would be healed. So just a tremendously faithful man. Um, and then after he uh, was done in Rome taking care of the sick. He went back to Spain and he stayed there and he just continued uh, serving the poor and praying and just uh, loving God. 
and then eventually he um he became sick and then when he died he just asked um to he just he was ill and he was in bed and he just wanted um to hold a crucifix that's all he asked for was to hold a crucifix and he just prayed even as he died he prayed for the forgiveness of all of um the friars and franciscans uh, in his monastery. So even as he was dying, he was still praying for other people. And he is a fantastic, fantastic example for young people, because even though he was a teenager when he first came in, and he didn't have any sort of the fancy schooling like the other saints we talked about, St. Augustine and St. Gregory, they got to go to so many nice, good, fancy schools. St. Didicus didn't get to do any of that, but his faith made him so wise and he was able to do such good things with just his faith in the Canary Islands as a missionary and then in Rome when he was healing people um, and then even just in his daily life in Spain. So we can always turn to St. Diego or St. Didicus um, for, for an example of what great things we can do with our faith. Now his feast day is November 12th, I believe. And uh, he is the patron saint of Franciscans and friars, um, obviously the Diocese of San Diego, where we live, um, and specifically uh, Franciscan laity. So people that are um, Franciscans are consecrated to that order of the Franciscans, but they're not priests. Um, they're just lay people. So we will close with a prayer to St. Saint, Saint Didicus or San Diego. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who by your wonderful providence chose the weak things of the world to confound the strong, mercifully grant unto us, your humble servants, that through the prayers of St. Didicus, your confessor, we may become worthy to be lifted up to eternal glory in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for hanging out with me this week, guys. I hope you had fun learning about some of the saints. We're going to talk about some more next week. We have three more to talk about um, that our hall is named after. And then we have a couple extras we're going to talk about next week as well. We will also have Children's Liturgy of the Word available on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. So be sure to watch out for that. And we hope you are all staying safe and staying well. We miss you so much and we will see you real soon.